Hello there. Today I watched season 2 of The Bear, and now I want to tell you about it. The Bear is a slice of life drama created by Christopher Storer that follows Carmen Carmi Brizzato, a young famous chef that's returning home to Chicago after his brother's suicide. In the first season, he took over his brother's restaurant, The Beef, and tried to make it work. It didn't, but at least he found a stash of money his brother had hidden away for him. With the money, he and the others could start fresh. We met the staff of The Beef and a few members of Carmi's family, and we watched them grieve over Michael Berzato's death, while trying to fix the endless problems that arose at the restaurant. In the second season of the show, we pick up with Carmi and the staff working on their new restaurant, The Bear. Carmi and Sydney are working together to manage it, and all of the original staff returns to help them out. The season is broken up into mini-stories about each of the main staff members at the restaurant, with some of them sharing an episode. Marcus, Sugar, Richie, Ibra, and Tina all get an episode that covers their own personal growth story for the season, with each of them learning to better themselves, take on their fears, and grow as people. They all have highly positive storylines without a lot of conflict. The conflict in their stories mainly comes from the emotional distress each of them feels about the new situation. Marcus is worried about enjoying himself while his mom is sick, Tina feels uncomfortable in a new environment, Ibra is scared of failing, Richie fears abandonment, and Sugar worries she's going to hold everyone back. They each tackle their issue during the time we spend with them while going about their daily lives. We see them talk to others about their issues, take on new challenges, and meet interesting new people. Carmi and Sydney both have their own storylines as well, but they each get much more than an episode to tackle them. Carmi is trying to find what makes him happy and starts looking in old places. What he finds resurfaces old memories and feelings. Sydney is worried about the opening of their restaurant and is dreading the possibility that they might fail, and spends her time trying to do everything she can to prepare herself. When Carmi starts flaking out on her to find out what makes him happy, she tries her best to maintain hope, but finds herself looking to her father for advice. There is also a main storyline that revolves around them trying to open up the bear on a sped up timeline so they can pay back Uncle Jimmy. On top of the main storyline and the individual episodes, there is also a special flashback episode to a Christmas when Michael Berzato was still alive. The episode follows the night from start to finish and we get an incredible look into just how dysfunctional the Berzato family is. It features a bunch of guest actors who do a great job of creating and fleshing out their characters in just under an hour, and the entire episode tells a tale of mental illness left unchecked. The story for this season felt a little scatterbrained as a whole and didn't have much of a common thread beyond the opening of the restaurant. It felt like a bunch of small vignettes that chronicled all of the staff's personal journeys but they don't necessarily have meaning when put together. Each individual episode was interesting on its own and did a good job of fleshing out the different characters but their journeys are very different. Marcus is anxious about his mom's health but Tina is just a little nervous in a new environment. They might relate to each other but their stories don't. It also struggled with tone at different points. There were different sequences that came out of nowhere were confusing and strange, and were never mentioned again. Like at one point, Marcus saves some random guy in the street at night, and then he never tells anyone about it. It was weird and interesting, but it felt out of place. I love the witty dialogue between the characters and how good a job they did of depicting people with mental illness, but it definitely felt like this season didn't have much of a point so much as it was just look at these people as they go through this. There are a lot of themes that could be spun together, but the show just doesn't have enough connective tissue to make them happen. It also wasn't very exciting. The stories have some deep emotions and great relationships in them, but most of the storylines are just mundane experiences. Marcus learns to cook from a pastry chef and we see them practicing techniques and chatting. There are exciting moments like when he saves a random guy on his way home, but they're few and far between. The cast does an incredible job of bringing their characters to life and there are so many standout performances this season. In the Christmas episode, Bob Odenkirk, John Mulaney, John Bernthal, Gillian Jacobs, Sarah Paulson, and Jamie Lee Curtis all appear as different members of the Berzato extended family. We spend time with each of them and get a ton of drop down knockout fights between all of them as a family. They each have their own charm and their own unique personality. It's hilarious watching them interact and also kind of sad at the same time. There is clearly a problem in this family that no one is willing to address until things blow up. The returning cast from season 1 is also given a chance to shine and Jeremy Allen White, Ayo Edebiri, Lionel Boyce, Liza Colenzias, Chris Witaski, and Abby Elliott all managed to step up. The others do a good job as well, but each of these cast members got their own individual storyline and they got to do a lot of subtle emotional work where they played up their feelings for the camera as they went about their day. They all get to undergo some character growth and they play it out wonderfully. So much charisma to go around. The new characters who make an appearance only get a short amount of screen time, but each of them manages to make their mark on the world of the bear. 
Will Poulter, Olivia Coleman, and Molly Gordon all have a huge impact on the different characters and create some lasting memories. Visually, the show is a clean and smooth experience. It presents the world of fine dining in a fast-paced manner, and really hones in on three areas. The emotions of the characters, the appearance of the food, and how cool the different chefs look working on it. The different settings are normal homes, different restaurants and their kitchens, and the remains of the beef as it's gutted. The camera does a good job of zooming in on the actors when they're talking, and getting every last bit of emotion out of their performance. It also does a good job of lingering on the actors after a big moment, just to take in their reactions. It gives a good sense of the different characters and what they're going through. They focus heavily on food and how it's presented, and also how the chefs look while preparing it. It's a big part of the show, and they show off an impressive array of different dishes, and each of them looks delicious. It's hard to make it through most of these episodes without feeling hungry. Sound-wise, there isn't much here to judge. Most episodes in this season are silent for the majority of their runtime, aside from the dialogue between the characters and ambient noise. The few times they do use music is during transition scenes and montage scenes, and they tend to be catchy and fun tunes. They don't mesh well with the emotions or what is happening on the screen, but they sound nice enough and there is a good variety here. The actors do a good job of carrying the scenery without the music, but there were a lot of moments that felt like missed opportunities. The show does use a number of sound effects to have a huge impact, but it was generally in the form of loud, distracting noises that play over a scene. Like at one point an alarm is going off during a meeting Carmi, Sydney, and Sugar have with Uncle Jimmy. It feels like it's highlighting how unprofessional they are and just how messed up things are at the restaurant. There are a couple of moments like that in the show, but they are, again, few and far between. Overall, The Bear Season 2 was a nice catch up with the characters we come to love, but it didn't have a strong overall story to draw you in and connect the different storylines. The individual stories were nice to hear, and they each had good moments in them, but together they don't add up to anything special. The cast manages to create unique and interesting characters, and that helps keep you invested. The visuals are smooth and capture the emotions well, while the soundtrack sounds nice but is ultimately disappointing. It just never takes any risks or tries anything new. 7 out of 10. And remember, these are just my thoughts on Season 2. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Bye bye